It was a normal Halloween night for Jacob, a 13-year-old boy who went to Fairfield Middle School. Jacob unwillingly agreed to his parents to take his little sister out trick-or-treating. Jacob didn't have a costume until Halloween night when he decided to be a zombie. His mother did his makeup. He had a red gash on his right cheek. The gash was a circular shape and looked pretty real, though Jacob's costume was last second. He was really happy with it. An hour passed when Jacob was ready to head out. He walked with his sister out the door and started walking from house to house. He lived in a middle class neighborhood. A couple miles away from his neighborhood was a rich neighborhood known for giving king size candy. Jacob's plan was to take his sister door to door until they got to the rich neighborhood. They would then hit up the houses giving away king size candy. Jacob started at the house next door and kept working his way down. Him and his sister were getting loads of candy. After about 30 minutes of walking, Jacob and his sister were right outside the rich neighborhood. Surprisingly, not many people were in the neighborhood trick-or-treating. In fact, nobody was. Jacob didn't mind, as he saw all the houses had lights on. His sister wasn't sure about the decision. She was nine years old, but she wasn't that stupid. She remembers her way back home and told Jacob she was gonna go back. Jacob didn't care. He wanted her to leave. He figured it would be more candy for himself. Jacob entered the neighborhood. He'd been there many times before Halloween. Not once has it ever been empty. He remembered hearing rumors that there were high school kids who would hang around the neighborhood and kill everyone who entered in crazy ways. Jacob figured that would have been the reason. Jacob went to the first house and knocked on the door. A lovely woman answered and gave him candy. Jacob was confused why no one was trick-or-treating when there was king-size candy. He got more nervous as he continued walking further into the neighborhood. It was really dark. It seemed as though the little light left in the sky disappeared. Jacob started to get cold. He began to feel extremely nervous now. He turned back to start walking home when he realized he was lost. I've only walked past one house, Jacob thought. There was no way he could have gotten this deep in the neighborhood. He walked along a dark sidewalk with one street light at the top of the hill where he was planning to go. There were houses on either side, but they had no lights on. Jacob ran to the street light. There were four turns he could make, right, left, straight, or turn back around. He looked right. A long road with no street lights stared back at him. He looked straight. Another long road with no street lights stared back at him. He looked to left. There was one street light that looked to be about a mile away. Jacob was confused as there were no houses on any of these roads. Jacob turned around. He was terrified at what he saw. At the end of the long street stood a tall figure. This figure had to be about eight feet tall. Jacob froze in shock. The figure started walking towards him. Jacob turned left as that was the only road with the light. He ran as fast as he could. The street light appeared to keep getting further away. Jacob looked behind him to see the figure catching up. Jacob ran and ran, but appeared to get nowhere. Jacob turned around. There, the tall creature stood, staring down at Jacob. An eight foot tall creature, so skinny you could see the bone under his skin. Each of the creature's movements sounded like bones breaking and scratching. Jacob's surroundings suddenly went black. Jacob felt a small hand tugging on him. He gained consciousness for just a moment. He realized he was in a cemetery before passing right back out. Jacob awoke to a small tickle at his right hand. It felt like a cold worm slithered against his skin. Jacob panicked. It was pitch black. Jacob's back was in tremendous pain. He then started to realize where he was. He reached his arms out to confirm his suspicion. Jacob started crying and screaming. He was in a coffin. He tried to squirm but was constrained by the uncomfortable wooden box holding him captive. He punched the lid only to hear cracks from bones breaking in his hand. He was trapped underground to die, buried alive in a cemetery. The last thing he heard was a terribly loud ear-piercing screech. Jacob thought of his mother his sister, and his father. 
that about everything wrong he'd ever done. He cried as he started to feel regret. Jacob had lost track of time. He had felt like he's been stuck here for years, though it had only been three days. He grew hungrier by the second. He was dying the worst possible death. Cramped, uncomfortable, regretful. He tried scraping at the coffin lid with his unbroken hand. It seemed the wood turned to steel as he got nowhere. Five days in the coffin and Jacob is turning insane. He feels one of the 100 spiders and worms in his coffin move every now and then. He talks to him like they're his friends. He's starting to get skinny as well. Jacob on his last threads of life hears shrieks of the horrible creature that put him in the coffin. He is covered head to toe in spider webs and just wants to die. He lets out one last tear.